Our favorite catwalking company has been using Cloud DLP to automatically redact and replace sensitive values from their data. But what about data that they need to protect but still use for things like billing? Stick around and find out how Cloud DLP's got them covered. Kitty Catwalks has already implemented Cloud DLP to apply redaction and replacement in their issued ticketing system so they don't inadvertently log any sensitive information from their customers. Their billing department, on the other hand, handles tons of credit card numbers. They need to protect that information but also access those values to process payments for their premium catwalking service. So while Cloud DLP offers a bunch of options to help you hide and remove sensitive values in your data, there's one technique that leverages encryption to de-identify and in some cases, re-identify those sensitive values. Crypto-based tokenization, also referred to as pseudonymization, is a powerful de-identification technique that uses encryption keys to replace sensitive data values with cryptographically generated tokens. This method of de-identification is especially popular in industries like finance and healthcare, where protecting data is a matter of utmost importance but preserving data utility is still desired. Cloud DLP supports three types of cryptographic methods. First is deterministic encryption. Here, the detected data is replaced with an encrypted value and prepended with an optional surrogate annotation. This method supports most input types and is authenticated, which makes it the most recommended tokenization solution. The next method is format preserving encryption, FPE. Like deterministic encryption, FPE will replace the value of an encrypted string, except it's going to be the same length and use the same character set as the original value. This is the way to go if you need to retain support for any legacy data systems that have strict length character set requirements. The third method is cryptographic hashing. Here, DLP replaces sensitive data with a hashed value. Unlike the other two methods, Cryptographic hashing uses a one-way token, so it can't be reversed. It's the perfect solution if you want each unique value to be transformed into a corresponding unique hash value, but don't necessarily want it to be reversible. More on that later. One huge factor that sets all three of these apart from most other de-identification techniques is that they allow us to securely de-identify data while retaining its referential integrity. Referential integrity allows records to maintain their relationship to one another even after being individually de-identified. For example, if we have this table of data with cryptographic hashing applied to one of its fields using the same cryptographic key, each of the unique values will have a consistent transformed value. This means that data can be de-identified for security or compliance reasons, but still used for business operations and analytical workflows, such as joining across tables or aggregating data. So another powerful feature of tokenization is the ability to reverse the encryption, to re-identify the data. Since deterministic encryption and format-preserving encryption use a symmetric encryption key to tokenize data, the same key can be used to essentially undo the de-identification to reveal the original value. The option to re-identify expands the utility of Cloud DLP so that data can be securely obscured and readable only by systems authorized to access the encryption key and the output value. Let's see how the DLP API handles tokenization by looking at this request from a Node.js app. In this example, we're going to apply format preserving encryption to the credit card number field of this sample CSV data that I'll set to the variable myCSV. This is the request object that we'll send to the deidentify content function. First, we want to specify the CSV data that we want to scan. In the deidentification configuration, we'll indicate a few things. Here in the transformations array is where we indicate each of the transformations we'd like to apply. In this case, we just want to target the info type credit card number and provide an FPE configuration for format preserving encryption. There, we provide a wrap key, which I've contained in the variable my wrap key, and the cloud KMS key we use to wrap it in the form of a KMS resource name that I threw into the variable my key name. We'll also specify that we want to transform our data using a numeric alphabet and provide a surrogate info type string that will be prepended to each value. The response to this function will include the data we provided in the request, except with the credit card numbers replaced with an encrypted string and prepended with a surrogate info type we specified. As you can see, 
Each unique value in our original data remains unique after transformation. With its referential integrity intact in a larger data set, we'd still be able to analyze the data without accessing the sensitive values. So how about re-identification? The re-identify content function takes this request object. It looks similar to the de-identified content request, except we'll be passing our de-identified data. As long as the surrogate info type and the encryption key we provide matches what we use to tokenize our data, the result will be our original data with the sensitive values revealed. Now that Kitty Cat Walks have added crypto-based tokenization to their DLP know-how, their security and compliance teams can sleep soundly knowing that their customer billing information is well protected on their systems. Next time, we'll take what they've learned so far and see how they'll use it to construct DLP templates so that they can reuse inspection and de-identification rules across different systems and processes. See you soon.